Okay, everyone, let's talk a little bit about lighting. Lighting is going to be an important feature of this rendering to create the mood, create our color scheme, and all those kind of things, and also to establish the time of day, which we want to be kind of a dusk or the or kind of a golden hour shot, as they call it in photography. So what I want to do here is first establish the environment lighting, and I'm going to try and establish lights one at a time so that we can make sure each one is doing what we want it to do. I'm going to start with the environment light, which is going to be a V-Ray light, a V-Ray dome. So let's just create this here. We go to create light, V-Ray, V-Ray light. We can set it to, instead of plane, we can set it to dome. And we can go and we can place it anywhere in the scene, like that. Let's turn off the other one here. Okay, that one's off. This one is set to multiplier 1, and basically all the settings can be just left at default. Now with V-Ray Next, you have the option to turn on Adaptive Dome, which it says exactly what it does there. It's supposed to be faster, reduce noise, and just look better overall. So we'll go ahead and use that. If you don't have V-Ray Next, you won't have that option there. So your V-Ray Dome is going to be slow and noisy anyway. Okay, the important thing with the V-Ray Dome light is the map. I've shown this before, demonstrated this before. If you don't know the workflow for this, here it is. So you just click on the map and you go to V-Ray. That brings up all your V-Ray map options and you want V-Ray HDRI. Okay, and then you can just go and click where you want your HDRI or, you know, select the HDRI that you want. You can also drag from here into here and instance it like that. Okay, and then so it's going to be looking for which HDRI you want to use. I am going to use a purchased HDRI here. That's what I used for the final image. But you can use the some free HDRIs that you have or ones that you've purchased. Let me show you a good place to get free ones. Okay, this is a site called noemotionhdrs.net. And here if you go to evening HDR, okay, here's some great golden hour HDRIs, they're they're fantastic. You just click download and boom, you've got it. Okay, so these are great ones. You can use any one of these in the scene and use it exactly as I'm going to be using the one that I've got. Okay, so that's how you put it in and assign the HDRI to it. I'm going to go back to the existing one I have so I can match what the final image looks like. Okay, so if I drag this HDRI in here and I click on it, you can see it's just an evening HDRI. Okay, so nothing special. What I've got here is a horizontal rotation of 300. Now remember with the rotation, zero is straight off to the right on your screen. Okay, and what that means is, let's see if I put this at zero. Nope, still can't see it. If you were to look at your image in Photoshop or something, there's usually a sun right in the center of it. If you look at these no motion HDRIs. The, the sun is always right in the center, okay, so right there. So when you put it at a zero rotation, that sun is going to be right out to the right of your scene. Okay, so when I have it at 300, that means it goes all the way around to about right here, 300 or negative 60 degrees. So my sun is going to be there in the sky. Okay, so keep in mind that line right there is pointing at zero, and that's where this, the middle of your HDRI is going to be. So your sun will be over here. Your sun will be coming from directly to the right of your scene. So for my scene, that would mean it would be coming straight down the street, which is almost what I want, except I want it a little more from up here. Okay, so if I were to, like, rotate this physically, rotate this thing, see if that line will... Okay, so something like that. Okay, that's kind of where I want the sun coming from, except that's not actually going to rotate the image in this case. So I want to recreate that in the in the image here. And I, that's why you can see that it was rotated at 300 degrees. That means my sun is here, but I rotate it 300 degrees to about right there. So now my sun is over in this direction. So if you don't do it with that, you do it here. Okay, if that makes sense. Zero here, 90 here, 180, 270, 360. So 300 is somewhere right in here. Okay, so that's where the sunlight will be coming from. You can see I put a sun, an actual V-Ray sun, in the similar location and rotation with a bright orangish light coming from it, and I made it really big. 
Let's turn that off for right now so we can just see the HDRI and what it's doing. Okay, and the other settings are overall multiplier 1, render multiplier 1, and this one is set to a multiplier of 1. So everything's at 1, and the only thing I've really adjusted is the rotation. So if we go to my camera and hit render, we'll see what we get. One other thing I want to do before we do that, though, let's just change our... Let's get a basic override material, V-Ray gray material. Actually, this one will probably work. No, let's do a different one. V-Ray material, standard gray, call it override. And then in V-Ray tab here, we will go to global switches, override material, drag it in to that slot right there, instance it. Make sure that this is set to exclude and not include, and that your list is empty here. And then we'll do a basic rendering of the full view and see what kind of lighting we're getting from just that HDRI. Okay, here you go. You can see that the color from the HDRI is coming off the sky quite nicely. It's looking realistic. Everything's matching color-wise and light-wise. One thing is my exposure is turned on currently. If I turn it off, it'll be dark like that. And this is actually going to be important when we're talking about figuring out the lighting because the exposure comes into play a lot as far as determining what our light level should be. Okay, so I actually want to switch from the static renderer here to this guy, the interactive renderer. Okay. Now what I can do here is go into my V-Ray materials while the interactive renderer is going and I can adjust the settings of my light. So for example, let's put this at zero and the light should be coming from directly down the street like we said earlier. And we'll see it update accordingly. So there now the light source is right there and it's coming down the street. That's not making a big difference in this case. Let's put it at 180 and see what we get. Now the light is on the right side of our building. Okay, so we get a totally different feel. There's some other settings we can mess with here, like turn up the sky. Okay, now it's much more bright. But of course I can turn down the exposure and it goes back to dark. So it's all kind of relative, keep that in mind, and I'll show you why that's important. Let's put this, put this back to 300. Now, another thing that you can do is adjust this inverse gamma. And this is kind of a cheat, I would say. But what it does is it makes the contrast of this sky much, much stronger. And therefore, the light source will become more uh, harsh and more direct rather than kind of soft. Okay, so the more you turn that down, the more it will do that. So if you put it to 0.5, we'll see a dramatic difference right away. The color changes dramatically, right? And the amount of light coming off of the light source is now very harsh. It's casting this very direct shadow. Okay, so that's not exactly what we want. It's a little too much contrast, right? So what you could do is then, and we want this to be kind of a diffused light that's kind of spread out across the sky because it's supposed to be dusk. So if you put this at 0.8, let's see what we get. This harshness will go away. Okay, and that actually doesn't look too bad. Maybe 0.7 would work. Okay, that's not bad, right? That's kind of cool. Now, what I was talking about with exposure. Okay, if we put the exposure all the way up here, that's obviously too bright. But I could turn down this to 1 now. And that would change it again. and Maybe put it in the right range that we want. But as you can see, what it's doing is it's making these lights under here much more bright in relationship to the sky. Okay, so you could put this to 0.5. and just get all your lighting from the exposure. But as you can see, now these lights look super, super bright, right? It looks more like a night shot and all these lights are really bright. So we want these lights to not be putting off too much juice because it's dusk after all, not like pitch black outside. So that what we have to do is turn up our sky and then adjust our exposure appropriately so that everything will look right. So I think we should just leave this at one so that it's right in relationship to these other lights. Maybe they're still a little too bright, brighter than I want. So maybe we could put this up to 1.5. Okay, now overall the whole scene is too bright, but we can change the exposure. See, now we're talking 
about the right range. Okay, so now our building looks right. These lights don't look totally blown out and ridiculous. And our sky looks nice as well. So it's all relative. You have to adjust things in relationship to one another. Okay, I think that looks about right, right there. Uh, maybe these are a little too bright up here still. So we could put the, the exposure way down, turn this up to get more overall light in our scene. Maybe go up a little more. Somewhere around there maybe. Right? So you can see how you can kind of adjust this for a long time to give you the right the right feel, the right kind of time of day, all that stuff. Now I want to show you what it's like if we change this HDRI entirely to a different one. Here comes a daytime HDRI. You can see it's a bright blue sky. There's a very harsh sun coming from the left side over there. Same angle as the other one, except probably higher in the sky. Obviously higher in the sky. Okay, so this gives you a completely different feel for your rendering. And again, you'd have to adjust. This would want to go down to one. Now in this case, if these lights are on, we shouldn't really see them at all because it's really, really bright outside, right? So what we do is maybe something like that. Maybe make this even more bright and turn down the exposure even more. So that in relationship to that sky, these, these lights are almost nothing. Which would be right in this case because the sun would be so much brighter than those little lights. So you wouldn't really see them unless it was dusk outside. Now keep in mind as well, like, okay, so the sky would probably be about that bright. Now this looks blown out right now, but when you put an actual material on it instead of like a light gray, then it might be just right. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good exposure going on right here. And you can fine tune it here. You could turn down the highlight burn so that we don't have so much blowing out going on. Okay, right there. That's great exposure right there. Okay, that's actually really nice. And I almost want to pursue this and say, you know, what would this look like? Maybe after the finish rendering is done, we can just go back in and change the HDRI and see what kind of results we could get with a different one. Okay, so with just those lights, and you notice I don't have any direct light going on at all right now. There's no sun in here. There's just the HDRI, and it's working quite nicely. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the other one, get my settings right for that one, and then I'm going to show you how and why I added in the, the V-Ray Sun to go with this one. Okay, with the environment light, we're going to move on to the next video, and I'll show you the V-Ray Sun settings, and we'll update it interactively to look at this as we go. So that's the next video. Stay tuned.